Hello everyone, this is Eric Chappell, Civil Community Evangelist for Autodesk, and I want to welcome you all today here for this webcast on gaming infrastructure, InfraWorks 360, 3DS Max, and Stingray. Our primary speaker today is Muhammad Abu Asali, and he is a technical specialist also for Autodesk. Joining us on the call also today to answer questions and, and maybe chime in and provide some commentary are Dave Tyner, Enterprise Solutions Champion, and uh, Bruno Landry, product owner for the Autodesk Live product. Uh, we're really spread out across the globe today. I'm, uh, I'm in Virginia in the U.S. Mohammed will be speaking to us out of Dubai. Dave's in Colorado and uh, Bruno is in Montreal. Before we get to our, uh, our presentation though, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about our community and about our webcast series. This is something we've been doing twice a month for about a year and a half now. Um, and we've got quite a library of, uh, of recorded webcasts. I'll get to that um, in a bit. But we try to do this the first and third Wednesdays of the month. And while that's on my mind, I do want to point out that next month, because of Autodesk University, the second webcast of the month is going to be delayed a bit. The first one, I believe, is November 2nd. Normally, we would do one two, two weeks after that. We'll be going three weeks after that because of Autodesk University and the number of Autodesk folks, including myself, are going to, who are going to be out there um, busy with that. Uh, our goals for this webcast series is to give you information about civil product features. And, you know, we used to, we used to just talk about InfraWorks 360 on this webcast series, and then we realized, we got smart and realized, you know, our InfraWorks 360 users are also civil 3D users, they're AVT users, they're Navisworks users, so why just talk about one product? And uh, today's webcast is a great example of that because we're going to be talking about InfraWorks 360 and also Sting Stingray, 3ds Max, who knows what else may come up. The idea is uh, typically we we have you we have someone from the product team address you guys because um, we know you like to to hear from them and interact with them. But sometimes a topic comes along that's just so good we uh, kind of break that mold a bit, and that's the case today with Muhammad. Uh, I came across. Uh, um, a handout that he did on this workflow, and I was so impressed with it, I said, Muhammad, can you please do a webcast uh, for our series on this topic? And I think you're really going to enjoy learning what he's about to teach you. Our next webcast, by the way, is going to be, uh, we, we'll call this a working title, but it's going to be about working with Revit and InfraWorks 360, and the big underlying uh, item being getting those coordinates to match up. How do you get them building from Revit into InfraWorks 360 and have it actually drop in the right place? And then all of the other tips and tricks and, and uh, little nuances involved in that workflow. Our speaker will be Elliot Rosenfeld uh, for, that, for that presentation. That'll be Wednesday, November 2nd, same time, 12 to 1 Eastern. Um, information on how to sign up for that webcast will be coming out on the, on the different channels that you see listed there in the bullets, the community site, the forum, Facebook, Twitter, um, and also if you've attended a previous webcast today or a previous one, you'll, you'll be on our mailing list for that as well, email list. I've got some new polls today, um, so let me call those up. The first one you've seen before, so it's not a new one. Uh, it is, what is your current usage level with InfraWorks 360? So if you don't mind providing your answer to that, I would, uh, we would all be very appreciative. This is the poll we've been running since the very beginning, since April of 2015. Um, and we're, we've been watching things trend downward. And in this case, downward is good. We're going from you know, not even having it installed and t up until regularly using it on some projects. And actually, I'm seeing the biggest margin yet. Right now, 38% uh, of you say you regularly use it on some projects. 26% have dabbled, 22% have installed and played with it a few times, and the rest are pretty small uh, small numbers. So we're definitely pushing into that regular, regular use category. So I'm going to close that poll and open another one. And for this one, we want to know what type of work you do with InfraWorks 360. Site design, road design, GIS data compilation for early project planning, residential design, visualizing projects. And you can pick more than one of these. So if you do more than one of these, please pick uh, the ones that apply. So I don't believe you guys can see the results, but what I'm seeing is 52% site design, 49% road design, uh, and keep in mind there's multiple choices here, so the, the percentages are not going to add up. 
42% uh, GIS data. The lowest value is 21% for residential design, and the highest at 84% is visualizing projects. So some interesting results there. I'm going to close that poll and launch one more. And again, you can pick more than one uh, choice in this question. In what areas would you like to see InfraWorks 360 develop? Choices are road design, site design, residential design, rail design, and other. Early results indicate uh, site design taking a strong lead, but uh, road design isn't far behind. So 45% road design, 58% site design, 32 residential, 26 rail, and 28 other. That's pretty high other, so um, be interested to know what some of those are. All right, that's it for the polls. I appreciate all of the uh, information. That's very helpful to us. And uh, I just want to let you guys know about the InfraWorks 360 Community Hub. Uh, this is slowly being, um, being transformed into a civil community hub. But for right now, it's pretty focused on InfraWorks 360. You can go to this central location and from here access the user forum, the discussion board, uh, idea station where you can submit your ideas for how to improve InfraWorks 360. So some of those specific ideas that you were thinking about when you completed that last poll, we'd like to know about them. And we'd like to give you the opportunity not just to tell us, but to tell us in view of your community peers and have them vote on your ideas as well. Um, the more community support we see for certain ideas, the more likely they are to be developed and implemented. Uh, we've got the gallery um, where users like yourselves post work that they're doing. This got a huge overhaul a few months ago where before you could only post images and videos, YouTube links, but now you can post live models and 3D panoramas and all kinds of cool stuff, all kinds of different ways to share what you're doing in InfraWorks 360 and Civil 3D and really any product. Uh, Social Hub is a feed of uh, Facebook, Twitter, other uh, social media, as well as some blogs that are, are relevant to the civil infrastructure space. And then all of the videos from this webcast series are posted uh, on this hub as well, as well as other videos that are relevant to InfraWorks Civil 3D and our civil products. And uh, links to get to information about upcoming webcasts are available there as well. I don't believe we're talking about anything future or preview or labs today, but in the event that we do, just know that anything that falls under those categories, there's no promise that these features are going to be uh, ex existent or supported in the future. Don't make any purchasing decisions on preview or labs features. We want to encourage you to ask lots of questions. Uh, we've got Dave and Bruno on the phone uh, uh, managing the, the, the questions panel. Unfortunately, we can't open the phone lines to, uh, to do the, the questions by audio because of the size of our audience. There would be so much noise in the background, we wouldn't be able to manage it. But please do use the questions panel. Type in your questions. Dave and Bruno are waiting to answer. And if something of particular interest comes up, we're, I've, I've asked them to go ahead and verbalize that and say it out loud. And then at the end, if we have time, we're also going to talk about some of the questions that have popped up. So the more questions, the more interaction, the more exciting and interesting our presentation will be, so please help us make it better by asking lots of questions. So with that, I'm going to turn the floor over to Mohammed. Mohammed, you now have uh, control of the screen to do your screen share, and the floor okay, is yours. Thanks, Eric, uh, and hello, everyone. I'm very pleased to be here with you today to talk about uh, InfraWorks 360 and how we can leverage the InfraWorks 360 models inside of 3ds Max and Stingray. Uh, thanks for the introduction as well, so I'm going to skip that. Uh, the whole process that I've worked on is basically moving the models from InfraWorks 360 into a compelling uh, gaming experience in less than uh, one hour. And I've actually utilized three different Autodesk tools, InfraWorks 360 definitely, 3ds Max, and Stingray. The good thing is uh, now we have InfraWorks 360 with the full capabilities and 3ds Max as part of the AEC collection. Uh, I've also actually included in the handout the recommended releases of each and every uh, software. I, I, I highly recommend the latest release of InfraWorks and uh, Stingray and specifically Stingray because Stingray is being developed uh, heavily and there are uh, many releases uh, every few months. 
So the sessions or webcasts objective is basically moving from that model, which I can share with the audience later on through Box, to a compelling uh, experience through uh, Stingray. And this is the gaming, gaming experience that we're going to create by the end of this webcast. So let's get started. I have a lot to cover, so I'll jump directly into the, the product. I'll go to Infowars 360. This is a model that I have created from scratch based on a terrain from uh, Dubai City, but I've uh, actually sketched some buildings. I've imported some others like Burj Al Arab here. And this model actually contains a multitude or different types of uh, data sources. So I've got 3DS uh, Max files. I've got SketchUp. I've got, I've got Revit, plus some city furniture and sketch buildings uh, from InfraWorks. Now let's uh, skip this part. And what I really uh, do uh, need from InfraWorks is basically the ability to, to transform or export the model into a file format which 3ds Max can read. For this purpose, I'm going to go into uh, the Settings tab. And I'll go into the Export 3D model. I click on it. And here, by the way, we do have a couple of options. So as you already know, we can select a polygon or a box or even we can select the entire model to export it. From my experience, it's always better to use the polygon because with the polygon, you're able to select a specified area no matter how uh, the shape of that area is. You will reduce the number of objects to be uh, exported and hence you will reduce the file size. So polygon is the best thing to do uh, no matter about the coordinate system. My workflow recommends using the single uh, file export. However, there are other workflows where we can use the multiple files. I think Dave and Bruno can talk about that later. So I just have to specify the location of my export, make sure that the materials and textures are exported, and merge objects with the same texture altogether. And I hit the export button. That process will take a minute or two to save on time. I have already did that, and it's available here. So this is the Infowars 360 export, FBX file. I've already uh, imported it into uh, 3ds Max and here I want to bring to your attention a couple of things. So once we import an FBX file or an OBJ, OBJ file from InfraWorks into 3ds Max, for some reasons we get some textures that are missing. So if I look into these, for example, trees that are from uh, the sketching roads in InfraWorks or the design roads, you will see that the colors has changed. The same thing applies to, for example, I have here a Revit model of two Ferrari cars that lost their texture. So we have some issues with that. And the same applies to other Revit buildings or 3ds Max models. So to skip that, uh, the, the, to actually correct that, we do have two alternatives. Either we manually uh, like uh, select those uh, textures or objects and assign textures or materials to them, or else, and this is the, bet, the best alternative actually, is by going into the uh, InfraWorks model. Let me just reset the scene here. I'm done with that. So I'll go back into my InfraWorks model. And instead of having all of this data, the, for example, 3ds Max models, the Revit models, and the SketchUp and others exported from InfraWorks to 3ds Max, the best thing would be is actually to have them deleted from your model like delete those objects if you have the native files, and then export the model from Infrox to 3ds Max, and then import those 3ds Max, Revit, or SketchUp models into 3ds Max. So what I've done here, I've actually just deleted one building and exported the model to show you what's the difference in terms of visualization would be. So I'm done from Infrox. That's the, the part that I need from Infrox. I'm just going to uh, kill the app. I'll go back into uh, 3ds Max, and this is how you import any FBX file basically into 3ds Max. You go into the uh, major icon over here, then to the import. Again, import non-native file formats into 3ds Max. Hit that, and then go into your file, which I've already saved on the desktop. So this folder, the final export, open. Just keep everything as is. Make sure that it's the Autodesk Media and the Entertainment uh, preset. Hit OK, and then 3ds Max will read that uh, model into uh, the scene. So if I zoom in a little bit, I don't have the building there anymore, right? But what I'm going to do, I'm going to import it, and this is the best thing to do, uh, actually. I'm going to import the Revit model directly into 3ds Max. So I go back into Import, Import again, 
I go to the desktop, I have a data sources folder over here, I'm going to import that residential building from Revit. Hit OK, and you will definitely get the building uh, there into 3ds Max. Now regarding the settings, I do recommend to turn off or take off uh, all of those objects except for the uh, material. Okay, so I'll, I'll take off the cameras, I don't need the daylight, the lights, the PRCs, and the BIM info. Keep everything else the same, I just need the materials basically. And hit OK. Now 3ds Max will import the Revit model into the scene and we, we actually have to do some modifications or transformations to the model. Sometimes the Revit model or the 3ds Max or SketchUp models are not actually to scale. So you need to scale them properly to fit into your model. For my case here, the Revit model is to scale and you will see that it actually uh, fits uh, correctly very easily. I just have to move it back and forth a little bit. So once imported, you will see that the Revit uh, model is there and you will notice that all of the textures are available, even the cards have their own textures. Whereas with the previous workflow, when we moved the FBX file from InfraWorks to 3ds Max, we lost most of those textures and we lost most of those cards. So this is the best thing to be done. Now I can select this, uh, for example, building and then easily move it around. This is the, I know this is a very uh, uh, manual way of doing it. So let me just select this, and I think it will be easier to move it around. There are definitely better ways to do that inside of uh, 3ds Max, so I'm just showing you the, the basic one. I'm not a 3ds Max expert, so just bear with me a second, and almost there. Hey Mohammed. Yep. If, if you just press J, it yep. will remove all those boxes, the white boxes around the thing. And then the reason that thing's moving is also because it's um, there's a dummy at zero zero that it's paired to two. So when you grab that building, it's grabbing mm, the dummy okay. as well. Yep. Thanks, Dave. Sure. So, uh, thank you. So once you place that building in its correct location, you can start doing the other edits and correction to the textures. I'm just gonna uh, delete some of those materials. Uh, what else I will do, I'll show you for example those trees that you get them from InfraWorks. All what you have to do inside of 3ds Max, just hit the M uh, button on the keyboard and that will actually activate the material editor. It's better to use the compact material editor, which is the simple form of, uh, so this one, compact material editor. And what I usually do for those trees, trees, I just go over the dropper, which allows me to pick a material from a certain object. I click the dropper. I select the palm tree, the front, the leaves of the palm tree, and then in that uh, settings, I just have to tick off the self-illumination uh, button. So once I tick it off, you can see directly that the color goes back into the trees. The same goes for the trunks or the, uh, the tree itself. Self-unilluminate and it's gone. It's already done. You will notice that we have other problems in the model. So for instance, uh, some of those swimming pools also lost uh, their uh, material textures. You can assign them manually or else do them the way I'm doing it. So again, you can use the dropper, pick that material, set a diffuse uh, color to, for example, blue, and it will directly update. Now the good thing about the export from InfraWorks that similar material will be grouped together. The same goes for the cars over here. So I pick, for instance, uh, the hood, and the, the, whatever color you like, you can pick that. And the same for the windshield, for instance, if you want to do some transparency, because apparently here we don't have enough transparency, you pick the material, and then you put the transparency to 50, for instance, and then you have transparent material. I'm not going to go deep dive into the manual editing, because this is time consuming. What I will do now is basically move into the uh, other part of my handout. So let's assume that we've already fixed all of the textures and this is heavily uh, described in my handout. You can check that for each type of object. What I want to do right now is uh, basically control A. I want to select all of the objects in my scene and it's just a recommended practice apparently. Group that uh, those objects, whatever name that is, and then right clicking on the select and move uh, icon. 
as you can see, the, the, the model has certain coordinates. I want to put it on the 0, 0, 0 point, hit outside, and the model is somehow centered. So we've already grouped it, then select all again, ungroup the objects, and they're ungrouped. This is apparently better for uh, 3D SMAX to Stingray workflows. Now the other thing that I want to uh, mention here is that once you export any 3D uh, objects from InfraWorks uh, in FBX file formats, for some reason the textures have a certain specific uh, naming that has a lot of dots and underscores. What we need to do inside of 3D SMAX before linking the model to Stingray is fixing those uh, bitmap, bitmap textures. Sorry. So I would like to thank a colleague of mine. Uh, he's in Brazil. He's called, his name is uh, Rodrigo Asaf. He helped me actually create a script for 3D SMAX to fix those uh, textures. So all what you have to do is go to the scripting tab in the 3D SMAX, then go into the run script, hit that. I'll go to the desktop, to the data sources, and this is the uh, script we have created. Select that script, open, and the script will open a new window. So first step is just hit the button of getting the bitmaps in the scene, and then 3ds Max will check all of the bitmaps related to this model, and it will highlight them for you. And then I just have to hit the convert names button to convert them all. As you can see, we have a lot of underscores, and sometimes we have a lot of uh, dots. So we have bodyd.tiff.jpg. This one will confuse Stingray and will create problems. So once we hit that button, it usually takes about five seconds. To confirm that those textures uh, have been corrected, just hit the get bitmaps in scene again, and you will see in a second that those were corrected altogether. So we don't have any more uh, double points or triple points, and we don't have too many underscores. Done. This is OK. So we have the model uh, fixed, we have the model centered, we have uh, manually edited the textures, and we have uh, run the script for fixing the bitmaps. This is what we really need to do inside of 3ds Max. There are many other options that we can uh, do to add more animations, but this is beyond the scope of this webcast and will take a lot of time, so I'm going to skip that for now. Now, inside of uh, 3ds Max, we have a Stingray uh, tab. And over here, there is the capability of linking 3ds Max to Stingray. Now, for you to be able to have that linkage between the two, you have to install the what we call the DCC link. It's an MSI file. Uh, once you install 3ds Max and once you install uh, Stingray, let me fire up Stingray in the background to save on time. I'll go to show you where you can find that uh, file. So you go to your My Computer, you go to the C drive, and in the C drive, you go to Program Files. From Program Files, you go to uh, Autodesk. From Autodesk, you look for the Stingray folder. And by the way, all of those steps are detailed in my handout. You look for the latest release. And then from there, you go into Extras. And there you have this MSI file called the Stingray DCC link file. You have to double click that, install the link for this uh, capability to be activated. So, we're done from 3ds Max. I've opened Stingray. Um, the, the, the user interface of Stingray is pretty much uh, easy and user-friendly. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to make use of the vehicle template to create a new project in Stingray. So what I'm going to do actually is double-clicking on the vehicle template. That will prompt a new window. There I have the capability of uh, renaming the project. So let me call it Infra for example, game, and then I can specify the location or the directory of that project. So I'll hit the uh, folder button. I'll go to the desktop. I'll create a new folder. I'll just call it infra, then pick the folder, select it, and create. Ask Stingray to create the project. So Stingray now in the background, if I zoom a little bit, it will create all of the uh, necessary files for that uh, project. And uh, the cool thing about Stingray, there are many learning materials, so you will be, you will have this tutorial. You can uh, click on the setup, how to set up a project. There are some uh, tutorial videos, etc., etc. So now we're into the project, and this is the main uh, user interface of Stingray. 
this is basically the scene. This is where we get to do all of the editings and we see how the, uh, the platform or the model looks like. This is the asset browser. This is where we have the directory of all the folders and the files within that Stingray project. This is the, uh, the detailed kind of like Windows Explorer where you get to see the files with some thumbnails. Here to the right of the screen we have the asset preview where we can see the files themselves and here there are some settings and extra uh, sections to be talked about later. So what I want to do right now is go to the 3ds Max model over here and I want to go to the Stingray tab because Stingray is already fired up and open, I can hit the connect button, then go back again. It is already connected. I'll select send all. So I want to send the whole model inside of uh, 3ds Max to Stingray. Once I hit the send all button, it will ask me where do you want to place or save your 3ds Max model inside of the uh, Stingray project. So I'll go to the desktop. I'll go to the infra uh, there, actually. Let me hit it again, sorry about that. So I'll go to the Stingray, send all. It directly actually uh, tells you that this is the infra game, the project that you have created in Stingray. So no need to, to search or fetch any files. I'll place it in the content folder. Inside of the content folder, I have to go to the levels and save it there. But let me just set the scene. That I've actually forgot to talk about one single step beforehand. So to make it easy for you, and if I want to follow exactly the same sequence inside of my handout, inside of Stingray, once you've applied the vehicle template, you go to the Levels folder inside of the content. Once you click on the Levels, you have this vehicle template file. Click on the vehicle template file, and everything in that vehicle will show up in the asset preview. You double click on the vehicle template file, and it will open up in the scene on, on the top. What I want to do is basically delete most of those objects that are available in the scene. We have cars, we have uh, cubes, we have cones. To do that very easily, you have to click on the first item, then uh, keep on clicking on the shift button to select multiple items and hit the delete. So you can select multiple items at once. You can definitely scroll down and select more and more items. So I'll hit the shift key, hit all, delete all. What I want to keep is basically the reflection probe, the sky dome, I want to get rid of the wall, so right click delete, and the light. So if I go back to my scene, you'll be able to see we have this, uh, the grid, we have the light probe which is required for reflecting the lights, and we have the light source on top. There are many lighting options inside of Stingray, but uh, we're not going to go them into them right now. Okay, I'll go back into 3ds Max, Stingray, I'm already connected. Send all. I'll go to the content content tab. I'll go to the levels. And there I want to save my uh, 3ds Max file. So I'll call it 3ds Max just for me to remember that it's coming from the 3ds Max and it's a Stingray FBX file format. Hit save and 3ds Max will start sending the data into Stingray. That definitely takes uh, a few seconds, up to a few minutes, depending on the complexity of your model, because here if we go to the statistics of the model, I hit the uh, show statistics. For example, this model has about uh, 2,500,000 polys and about 4 million vertices. So the more complex your model, the more time it will take to transfer the model into Stingray. Now, once I've hit the Save button, Stingray, uh, because it's linked to 3ds Max, prompts this window, and here I have to pick the options uh, for what types of material or objects I want to transfer. So I, I want to transfer the materials, update the materials, the textures, update the textures, and create textures folder. Uh, if you have created any animations in 3ds Max, you better click uh, or tick this box, and then those animations will be transported automatically into 3ds Max. In our case, we don't have any, so I'm just going to hit the import button. And once you do that, inside of Stingray, you have this status bar to the bottom right corner of the screen tells you what is the progress of the process uh, being done uh, with time. So now we're importing the model into 3ds Max. This is going to take uh, some time. Maybe we can answer some questions in the, uh, in the meantime. Do we have any?
Mohammed, one thing I wanted to point out is that the handout is available, the one that you've been referring to, uh, in the handout section of the GoToWebinar interface. So anyone who'd like to download that can do that at any time. And uh, several people have asked about the script that you showed, whether it's going to be available. And I think you're going to share your box folder at the end, correct? That it's going to have that? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, Mohammed, um, there's a question here. Um, is he using a real-world terrain or simplified manually created terrain in, in I guess I don't understand that question. Okay, I'm actually using an existing terrain from Dubai but to be honest because it's a desert terrain I've just placed a land area on top that's greenish somehow but it's the real terrain. Now, if the model is a huge, is large in size, and the terrain is really complicated, uh, and you want to export, uh, for example, 100 kilometer, square kilometer out of InfraWorks, there are techniques where we can maybe optimize the terrain a little bit to save on its uh, vertices and polys. But for a model like the one I have here, a few square kilometers, it's, it's very easy to move it across the three uh, software without having any issues. It may be one thing, Mohamed. Maybe next, yeah, I will maybe suggest that you create a new folder, create name like import, instead of putting everything in the roots of the level folder. So it's going to be maybe easier just to have like all your imported data from 3ds Max in, in one single folder instead of putting everything in the roots of the level uh, folder. Okay. Uh, I would I would actually add this into the handout later. That would be better. So once the model is being uh, exported or linked into Stingray, we get the 3ds Max file, the FBX file. Once we click on it, it will show in the asset preview. If I zoom into it, you can see that it's there. So what I want to do here, in order to edit it, I will drag, I will click on the 3ds Max file, drag and drop it into my scene. It doesn't matter where you drop it because once you select that, we can actually uh, change the location of that model in the Stingray scene. So let me hit, let me go back to 3ds Max because we're done from 3ds Max. I'm just gonna kill the program to save on the uh, resources. Keep the Stingray there. It's still actually loading. So yep. I have my model there in Stingray. Once I click the model, it's shown here, as you can see. If I go to the property editor of the model, I can edit the location of the model over here. And I want to place my model directly beneath the 0, zero point uh, of the Stingray scene. So what I'm going to do here, I'll just click 0, hit the y-axis value, and hit zero again. And the scene, the whole model will be aligned with the uh, zero, zero, zero point. So uh, the other thing to be done is that uh, to fix some of the textures inside of uh, Stingray because you will be seeing, once I zoom in a little bit, we've got the palm trees right, but for some reasons the other, let me just zoom in a little bit, the other trees which were looking okay in 3ds Max now, they do not look very okay. Uh, and sorry about the zooming. Let's go a little bit right. You see them that uh, they're like boxes with some uh, surround black surroundings around the leaves. So we're gonna fix that. To fix those textures, all well, what you have to do is search for the texture in the uh, in, in this window over here. So usually they are named NCL1. This is part of the naming there hit enter to filter them out and then you will be able to see all of the textures that are available here with the naming of NCL1. You will see all of the textures. You have to drill down to find the textures for those trees in particular. The red ones and the yellow ones for instance. I'll go further down. I know it's a tedious process but I couldn't find any other automatic way of doing it. So we'll look for those as they update.
go down a little bit more. By the way, the sky is the limit when we're talking about the 3ds Max uh, Stingray integration. I've made a couple of trials using Civil View to create animated cars following certain and importing them into the Stingray scene, and they really look uh, great. You can do the same with people as well. You can uh, create or uh, populate some people and animate them as well. So I'm just going to go down a little bit. Now these textures, the more uh, the complex the model is, the more textures you're going to have. Once you locate those textures, it's going to be very easy to edit them, as mentioned in the handout. And once you click on that texture, it directly updates here. So let me go back a little bit. Maybe I've missed it. Bruno and Dave, do you have any idea why the uh, textures take a lot of time to update sometimes? It's only the texture map that is missing, right? Mm. Is Sorry, there... I'm here in the questions. What's the problem? So the textures take a lot of time to update. And I've noticed that a couple of times with Stingray. So once I go up and down, they oh, it's like... The okay, the I, is, yeah, maybe the number of materials is quite high. You have more than 200 materials right now. And I see that, I guess some of them are just duplicated, but they are in fact the same materials. So that's maybe the kind of optimization you would want to do in Max. Because if you see all those, those frame material, these yeah. are probably the same material applied to all the doors, which could, yeah. should be the same, in fact, but they are just duplicated right now. I had kind of the same problem going from Navisworks to, uh, to Stingray. Okay. Is there a certain workflow that we can, uh, we can create or maybe share with the attendees later on? Yes, of course. I did, I did a tutorial on the area regarding the uh, Navisworks to Stingray workflow, and one of the yeah. problems is that you have, like, multiple instances of the same material, so you'll need to like um, make one master material and sh in fact combine all the materials that share the same name and just uh, create a one single instance of it. I can share okay. the, uh, the tutorial I made. There is a Mac script for that, so uh, it can be shared. It's already on the area. Okay, that would be perfect. So we're reaching there. We can see some, you know, the grass material. So I'm pretty close to it. Just bear with me a second. OK, so we're almost there. You can see some of the leaves. So if I look at this uh, red leaves uh, tree, if I click on the texture of that tree, you can see that there is black surrounding around the leaves themselves. The way to go about this is basically by uh, clicking on the texture, as you can see. Then once you're there, apply or tick uh, the uh, use color map alpha. This is what I've noticed by, uh, you know, with trials. And I think it gets it better if you click the use roughness map as well. Then what you need to do is go to the make unique button from the property editor. Hit the make unique button. Then it translates into open shader graph. Hit that as well. You go into the shader graph where you can edit the, the flow with the nodes. And you know that Stingray supports node programming. All what you have to do there, just click on the title block of the last node. Once you do that, this uh, window updates. And you have to set the blend mode instead of transparent to transparent fade, apparently. And the face calling uh, into double-sided. This is what actually worked with me when trying several models uh, throughout. Close that and add the texture updates automatically and even updates in the scene itself. So if you, if you look at the, the tree, it's now uh, transformed into its original case as an InfraWorks 360. You can do the same for all of the other uh, textures, the green one, the yellow one, but I want to save on time and move to the other uh, steps in the handout. So we've, let's suppose that we also fix the, uh, the other trees. What we need now to do is select the model, 
and it will select it all. Now we want to create what we call the collision uh, mesh. So from this, we right click, we select the model, then we right click on it. Stingray will prompt us with those options. I want you to click on the open, selected, and uh, unit editor. So this is where we're going to tell Stingray, create the mesh collisions uh, throughout the model. And this process actually takes uh, most of the time because Stingray has to analyze all of the uh, model. So as you can see, all of the uh, textures or the terrain and the, are there. I will wait uh, a couple of seconds for it to populate the model in the scene over here, and then I'll select it all. Any questions? If I may subject for that part, maybe you yeah. don't want to add collision on every single mesh you have in, in your scene because it's going to have, it, it, it's not good for the performance. So usually what we do is you import maybe a first model, like the roads, the walls, that may be the building. So everything that you actually need a collision on it. But for example, maybe for the tree, you don't want to add collision on them because it just it just drag the performance and you don't really need maybe like perform um, collision on all the meshes. Uh, I'm sure you're absolutely right but uh, I just tried to you know minimize the number of steps for the people who are yeah, yeah, going agree. to go through. Yeah, so just to make it simpler. Yeah, so yeah this is the a model, fastest route. Yeah, okay. Uh, Thanks, Bruno. So inside of this, once we, we, we get the model inside of the unit editor, all what you have to do is click uh, Control A to select all of the components. And once they are all selected, they will be highlighted here in a different color. You will see in a second. So now it's selecting all of the components in the model, which takes also a couple of seconds. They're all selected. And then I ask Stingray. I go to the Create button, uh, Create tab, hit on it, and ask it to create the physics actors. And this is where Stingray will uh, basically generate the mesh or collision mesh of the whole model. And this process, again, takes a little bit uh, of time because, as you can see here, we have 736 meshes uh, that are already selected. So, Bruno, I'm definitely sure if we use your, uh, your own workflow, uh, these meshes will be uh, reduced by maybe 70 to 80 percent, I guess. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Anyway, once they're all uh, selected and the mesh is created, uh, it's done. It's not showing anything here. So what I have to, to do is go to the File tab, click on it, and then Save All. I want to save the things that I've done. Once saved, so data is compiling, as you can see here, in the status bar. So I think it's doing some mesh optimizations uh, automatically. Let's give it a few more seconds. But other than that, actually, you won't have any uh, steps that will take longer. Uh, and by the way, once you get familiar with the workflow, you'll be able to do that, uh, all of the steps in the handout within 30 minutes. You don't even need an hour to do it. So I think it's done. OK, physics actor selected. I'm going to hit the uh, X button to close the unit editor and then go back into my uh, model. So we're almost done with Stingray. One thing still to mention is that this uh, zero, 00 point is the point where the car will be dropped into the model. So you would rather place it in a way that is on top of a, a road or a flat surface. Because from experience, I've noticed if you drop the car on top of a building, for instance, it will roll over and you won't be able to return it into its uh, normal condition. So I'm just going to uh, place it over here. And in order to test the model to make sure that it's running properly, we have a very cool feature inside of Stingray called the uh, test level. So either you hit the F8 button on the keyboard or you hit the uh, icon over there. Before I do that, I want to make sure that I've saved everything, so I'll go into File and Save All. Stingray will prompt me with these changes. Yes, I want to save all, save selected. Compiling the project again. Uh, 
it's compiled. Okay, I hit the uh, test level button, and you, it's now compiling the uh, testing for the model and launching it. So the car, as you can see, was placed from a heavy location on top of a building. We can change that. The cool thing about this uh, test level is that you can start using your keyboard buttons, the WASD, W-A-S-D, so W for moving forward, uh, A for moving left, uh, you know, D for moving uh, right, and S for moving backwards. So apparently the uh, collision mesh is working and the vehicle template is also working. So you can see that everything looks fine. We have the trees, we have the buildings, everything is okay. So we're happy with it, we're fine with the uh, experience. We hit the escape button. And here where we wanna uh, deploy or export that experience into uh, an exe file. Usually, you don't have the, that deployer tab over there. What you need to do, you go to this plus uh, button, you click on that, and you ask Stingray to show you or add the deployer tab to your uh, user interface. Once added, it will allow you to export or deploy your uh, game into many different platforms, Windows, Android, iOS, PlayStation, or even Xbox. In this instance, I'm gonna use the Windows one. I'm gonna place it on the uh, desktop. Let me create a new, call it Stingray game, for instance. Select the folder, keep that as release, and hit that as game, and then click on the package project for Windows. And this usually takes a minute or two max to compile it into a folder and create the exe file uh, for the game. Uh, I think we can take a couple of questions if you have any in the meantime. Yeah, Mohammed, there's been quite a few questions, but uh, we're knocking them out as they as they uh, come up. Okay. One question I recall was about the availability of Stingray. Um, and just to clarify, it's a separate product from 3ds Max, and, and Muhammad, I don't know if, if Dave or you or one of the other folks in the call can explain that. Um, okay. I know that it's not included in the AEC collection, and it needs uh, another or additional subscription. That's all that I know. And it is available as a trial if folks want to try it out currently, is, is that correct? Exactly, a 30-day trial. I do recommend everyone to download the software uh, and play around with it using the handout that I've created and the workflow that's there. It's actually very easy. Once you do a couple of uh, trials, you will be very uh, proficient with it. So let me just now minimize the uh, Stingray software and go into the Stingray folder which I've created, the model then go into the Win64 folder, release, and there we will have the game.exe file uh, which we have deployed or exported. Double click on that, and as you can see, the game will directly uh, start. So it's just loading in the background. I just have to click on the start button. The car will be placed in its uh, position. Now, I should have actually fixed that inside of Stingray, but for the sake of just trying it, I'm just going to show you that it works. And while I'm hitting the controls, I don't know if the attendees can hear the acceleration or the noise coming out of the car and the collisions as well. No, we can't. Okay. So noise are there. The collisions are there. If you go on top of a bump or you go on a hill, everything will be uh, actually, uh, you know, experienced inside of the game. So as you can see, the visuals are okay. Everything that we have inside of InfraWorks was exported into 3ds Max and then into Stingray. Another uh, clarification, Mohammed, too, is that you know on our end we're seeing it through screen share, so it looks kind of choppy. But on, on what you're seeing is really smooth. Is that correct? It, exactly. Yeah, that's true. Actually, let me go into the. Uh, I have a couple of slides that I want to show you. Uh, okay, we talked about. Uh, and this is just to let people know that we have some issues when exporting models from InfraWorks. For example, if you're importing, and this is just for your info, if you're importing a SketchUp model, this is how it looks like inside of SketchUp. 
it looks great inside of 3ds max but if you import this ketchup into infraworks sometimes you lose some uh, you know textures so the best thing to do export the model from infraworks to 3ds max without the revit models or sketchup models and import those models directly into 3ds max the same thing goes for other models as well now for the releases i highly recommend to go and install the latest release either the 1.4 or the 1.5 when I started the workflow, I started with release 1.2 and I had too many issues to fix. So the best thing to do, make sure you have the 1.4, 1.5 release. Uh, if you have it already installed, once you open Stingray, it will show the release at the top left corner of the screen or once you fire it up, it will also show in the right bottom screen uh, of Stingray. Uh, system requirements, you don't have to have a very powerful machine, basically any 64-bit Intel or AMD uh, core machine. You have to have 8 GB of RAM minimum and 4 GB of free disk space, uh, nothing more. Uh, one more thing to mention is that once you're running Stingray, sometimes you'll be prompted with this uh, error message. So if you have NVIDIA graphics card, you'll get this message, Stingray won't work. What you have to do is go to the control panel from the control panel double click on the NVIDIA and view desktop manager once it opens up you have to go to the desktop management tab and disable the features there then hit OK and then from there onwards Stingray will work if you have that enabled Stingray won't work at all this is actually the video that I have created for the whole workflow it's like 40-45 minutes and it will also be shared with you on the box folder as well this is the box folder that I have created online Anyone with the link, with the top link, can access the material. You will be able to find the Infrawork 360 FBX export, the one I have exported from the Infrawork model earlier. There is a read-first file about the contents of the folder. There is the handout, uh, which Eric already, you have already shared it with the team, I guess, and it's there on the website. So it's revision 9 currently, and it's still work in progress. The video, 45-minute video that shows you step-by-step step how to go through the workout, the, the workflow, the Stingray, Stingray game that I have exported with the EXE file and finally and most importantly the uh, uh, Max script which converts or uh, corrects the naming of the bitmap textures. All of these material are there on the box folder. And I've just pasted a link to that box folder in the chat window so um, open your chat window Perfect. and you should see that link there. And also I'm going to include the link to the box folder and the handout, the PDF handout on the discussion board post that has the registration information for today's webcast. So that will live there forever uh, if you ever want to go back to, uh, to download it. And I'll include that information on the uh, YouTube recording when it gets posted as well. Thank you very much. So this is it from my end. Uh, if there are any more questions to be answered. Uh, one of the questions was about the animation of the object. So I thing that you, when you exported from 3ds Max to Stingray, you didn't check the uh, export animation, right? So exactly. mostly what you would want to do is to export probably your animated object separately because when you export, when you import the animation from an object, uh, from an FBX, it will create a bone structure for all the objects. So this is not necessary to have a bone structure for um, a building. So um, let's say your windmill, this is like a, this is one of your animated objects, so this one you will maybe export it separately just for that object with the, its animation. So you, when you import it in Stingray, you will check import animation and when you're going to place it in your level, you just need to trigger that Im animation using uh, level flow, which is quite simple. So basically on level load, you just uh, check the animation. Uh, select the animation and apply it to your windmill so it will start when the level is loaded. Okay, thank you Bruno. And other question we had was about uh, sharing uh, the game EXE. So basically from Stingray you can export, uh, you can publish your project to various platforms. So uh, from Windows, iOS, Androids. Um, and one thing, when you publish your game, your game or your presentation for uh, for Windows. Basically, you're gonna it's gonna be a release. It's gonna be frozen in time, uh, a self-executable of your project. So it's a, gonna be a .exe, and 
so anybody can just run that project and try it around, but they won't be able to have a, it's not the editor, right? So they cannot modify it. So that project can just be zip and share with, the, with someone so they can try on their side. But one of the question was about the limitation, uh, like the hardware limitation. So mostly when you're doing 3D rendering in 3ds Max, it's very CPU demanding. But on the other side, for a, a game engine, which is uh, mostly demanding for the graphic card, so the bottleneck will be the computer that runs the game at the end. You'll need a good graphic card to have a good experience and a good uh, frame per second. All right, any more questions we want to uh, air out before we close it down? Someone just asked for a VR demo. It's a bit difficult to do a VR demo, I guess, on, on a GoToMeeting like this. But yes, this project could be uh, run in VR. Maybe, uh, as I said, there is probably a bunch of optimization that will need to occur probably regarding the material, especially in VR, you'll need to reduce, yes, the number of poly, but also the number of objects and the number of materials. So you'll see when we sign your project, you have like multiple material apply for all the doors. You'll basically, in 3ds Max, you'll try to reduce that, that number of material just to be sure it's going to be performant in VR. Because in VR, you need like 80 frame or 90 frame per second per eyes to be sure that you have a good experience or else people will get sick and have like bad experience, it's going to be choppy and not enjoyable. All right, great. I'm going to take back control of the presentation. And I just want to remind everybody that uh, our next webcast coming up is going to be on Wednesday, November 2nd from 12 to 1 Eastern. We're going to talk about uh, bringing Revit models into InfraWorks 360 and specifically on uh, unraveling the magic of getting the coordinates to match up. Um, one more thing about today's webcast, there is a discussion board post about this webcast, which up until now folks have used to link to the registration. That post will stay alive and I'm going to attach to it today's handout and the link to the box folder so that uh, you folks can come back and visit, you know, visit the, revisit this information. It's also a great place if you have questions about anything you've seen here. If you try out the workflow and you, you discover something or run into a snag, that would be a gr great place to post questions. Um, we'll be keeping an eye on, we, we're always keeping an eye on the discussion board from our end at Autodesk, but also your, your colleagues and peers will be seeing your questions as well, and maybe they can provide answers also. Um, I want to thank our presenters, uh, presenter Mohammed today, uh, also Bruno and Dave for um, being such effective question answerers. There were lots and lots of questions in the in the questions panel today. You guys did an awesome job of, of fielding all those, not only in the questions pane but but verbally during the presentation. Um, great presentation. I know we're going to get a lot of visits on this uh, on the recording. And again, don't forget about the next one coming up on November 2nd where we'll deal with Revit and, uh, and InfraWorks 360. A lot of folks had questions today about lining up coordinates when uh, getting the, these two products to talk to each other. That's going to be, you know, I think a big focus of the topic for the next webcast is getting Revit and InfraWorks to, uh, to talk to each other from a coordinates standpoint. So thanks again everyone for giving us your time today uh, and have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week.